markets. Yeah, st stocks. stocks bad, you know, bonds, still money coming into the United States. But it all happens at an interesting time. These worries about debt dominating the headlines that we're talking about coming out of Europe. And what are we doing here? Well, we want to borrow more money, of course, with President Obama making that official request for Congress to raise the debt ceiling again. Peter Schiff starts us off today, uh, joining us uh, from his uh, radio studio, as a matter of fact, CEO and global strategist at Euro Pacific Capital. It's always good to have you on the show. Now, Peter, logically, you look at this and you do say, boy, it is kind of funny to see us wanting to borrow more money. And aren't we learning a lesson from Europe? But I'll put it to you this way. I think that's disingenuous in some ways, because to me, the situations are much different. And the number Dakin showed you, 1.8 percent, 10 year note is much more important. As bad as they are, the money still comes here and we have to raise that debt ceiling. What choice do we have? What do you say? Well, well first of all, you're right. The situations are different. The situation is worse in America than it is in Europe. Oh. We are able right now to benefit from the European problems because people are buying dollars because they're afraid of the debt in Europe, even though the debt is bigger here. Right. And we are making it even bigger well, come by on, raising Peter, the debt second, ceiling. Hold on a second. We are exacerbating our problems. We should, be, is... we, should, we should keep that ceiling where it is. I mean, wait a minute. What, wait, what wait, good wait, is on, the ceiling second. if you raise it whenever you get there? We need to be reducing debt in this country. We need to be That's paying exactly down debt. That's exactly what I'm talking about in terms of being dis disingenuous. So you have this crisis in Europe, which is illegitimate. There's our national debt, by the way. And I know this headline grabs everybody. And it's obviously a ton of money, 15 trillion dollars. But you have this crisis that's legitimate in Europe. And then we're going to we would create our own here if we didn't raise the debt ceiling. And how can you say things are worse over there? Then the money wouldn't be flooding no, in they here. Are worse over here. First of all, 15 trillion. That's just the tip of the iceberg. We have a lot more federal debt than that. And of course, we have a lot of state debt and American individuals are in debt. The whole nation is in debt. We just had our trade deficit that came out today, right. almost $60 billion for the month of November. We are living way beyond our means. We're consuming too much. We're not producing enough. We're not saving. We're borrowing all this money. And right now we can do it. Interest rates are at record lows. But what is going to happen when they go up? That's you the know, question. Interest I Interest rates were very, very low in Spain and Italy and France and Greece a few years ago. Now rates have gone up. What's going to happen in America gonna, when rates go up? Do you think it's going to be any better than it is there? I'd say we are even more dependent on cheap financing than Italy was. I'm going to ask you France a question was. here, Peter. And when that our does rates give go you, up, we've got a bigger a problem to deal with. I'll ask you a question that does give you credit using this analogy that the you, you were out there screaming and yelling here and everywhere else about the previous crisis, talking about 08, uh, before most people were, including the Federal Reserve, by the way. We, had the, um, we, it, we found out today, really, that back in 2006, they were pretty much clueless. Ben Bernanke and everybody else had no idea what was coming. So you were right there. A lot of people didn't think it was going to happen. It did. In this case, how do we know? When, because the interest rates at 1.8% on the 10 year note, I mean, at some point they're going to just spike up overnight. But what's going to happen? Yeah, well, remember, the mistake that the Federal Reserve made among many and that other people made was assuming that real estate prices would never fall. That was the underlying yep. assumption that gave this rosy scenario. Well, the same people are making the same mistake now or similar mistake with interest rates. They don't understand the potential for interest rates to really rise and what that's going to do to the economy, what that's going to do to the banks, what it's going to do to real estate, what it's going to do to the government's fiscal situation. Right. And the more debt we add now, now, the more dependent we make the financial sector and the government on cheap financing, the bigger the collapse when interest rates go up, because they're going to go up eventually, and they're going to go much higher than anybody right. thinks, and the damage to this economy is going to be catastrophic. All right, Peter. The crisis that we are creating is going to be much bigger than the financial crisis of 2008. And if our leaders couldn't see that one coming, it stands to reason that they're not going to see this one coming. Well, the 06 quote we put up from Bernanke does look kind of silly in hindsight, but... Um such as it is. Peter, thank you very much for taking time out today. We'll talk to you again soon.